Hey friends, welcome to The Lab Elementary Online. My name is Austin and I am stoked that you chose to join us today. Look, I'm a walrus. Have you ever been in a crowd of people, maybe at the mall or school or swimming pool, and you noticed someone that really stood out? Maybe their hair was a crazy color, or they were taller than everyone else, or maybe they were just talking super loud. There are all kinds of reasons people can stand out, and this month we're going to be talking about what it means to stand out for God. To get us thinking more about this idea, I have a game for us. In this game, there's going to be a bunch of emojis on the screen, and you'll only have five seconds to find out which one stands out, meaning which one is different. Keep track and see how many you can get right. Are you ready? Here we go! Great job, friends! How could you tell which one stood out in those pictures? Because it was the only one that was different from the others. Standing out means being different and set apart from the things around you. When it comes to God, that's exactly how He asks us to live. God doesn't want us to act, talk, and behave like everyone else. He wants us to live like Him and to follow the example Jesus set out for us while He was on earth. This often means doing things opposite to the way the world expects, like loving your enemies or forgiving people who don't deserve it. Now, in today's Bible story, we're going to hear about a guy named Daniel who set himself apart by eating vegetables instead of the king's food. Now, that sounds kind of weird, but don't worry, it'll make sense once you watch the story. Let's go check it out, and I'll see you back here soon. When Jehoiakim was the king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, went with his army to Judah. Because God's people had sinned against him, God allowed King Nebuchadnezzar to take over the city of Jerusalem. 
King Nebuchadnezzar told one of his leaders to bring some of the people to Babylon. He wanted boys who were healthy, handsome, and good learners to serve in his palace. Every day, King Nebuchadnezzar gave the boys a special diet. They ate the same food and drank the same drinks that the king ate and drank. Four of the boys who came from Judah were different than the others. They worshiped the Lord, the one true God. Their names were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The man in charge of the boys gave them new Babylonian names. Daniel's new name was Belteshazzar. Hananiah's new name was Shadrach. Mishael's new name was Meshach. And Azariah's new name was Abednego. Even though Daniel and his friends weren't in Judah anymore, Daniel still wanted to obey God. God's laws told Daniel what he could and could not eat. Daniel was not allowed to eat some of the food that the king gave the boys. Daniel asked the man in charge for permission to eat other foods, but the man in charge was afraid. If you don't eat the king's food, you won't be strong like the other young men. The king might get angry and kill me, he said. Daniel said, try this for 10 days. Let us only eat vegetables and drink only water. Then see if we are healthier than the other young men. The guard agreed. At the end of 10 days, Daniel and his friends looked healthier than the young men who had eaten the king's food. After that, the guard allowed Daniel and his friends to keep drinking water and eating vegetables. God was happy that Daniel obeyed him. God blessed Daniel and his friends. He made them wise and smart. They learned lots of new things. God gave Daniel the ability to understand visions and dreams. When their training was over, Daniel and his friends stood before the king. The king saw that they were smarter and stronger than all the other young men. They were even smarter than the wise men who worked for the king. Daniel served the king for many years. Daniel chose to obey God no matter what, and God blessed Daniel and his friends. In an even greater way, Jesus always obeyed God. He came to earth and followed God's plan to save sinners. Jesus never sinned, but he died the death we deserve. Jesus rose from the dead, and those who trust in him receive God's forgiveness and blessing. Hello, what's up, dudes? Welcome to the Lab Mart, bro, where we use vegetables to talk about God, dude. I'm pretty sure that's never been done before. Anyways, dude, I'm your host, Broccoli Rob, and today you're joining me and my very good friend, Josh the Squash, dude. Let's give a hand for Josh. Josh the Squash? Do I really have to be called that? There's lots of other vegetables out there that, like, do I have to be named after a squash? Yeah, we talked about this. You're Josh the Squash. Your hair looks like spaghetti squash, so you're Josh the Squash. Think of two other words than rhyme. You can't, so we're gonna stick with Josh the Squash. Okay, fine. Hi, I'm Josh the Squash. Uh, and uh, we're here today uh, at the Lab Mart and we're gonna do some vegetable challenges called Sort Those Veggies. That is absolutely right, dudes. So, we're gonna have a challenge where between me and Josh the Squash, we're gonna have two kinds of vegetables, dude, in our plates. And we're gonna take 30 seconds and try to sort those veggies into separate bowls, dude. But the catch is, is we can only use the part of our body chosen by our wheel of wonders here at the Veggie Mart, dude. The first person to sort all the veggies only using that body part rolled by the wheel is the winner, dude. And they get to choose the vegetable the loser has to eat. Get ready to eat some Brussels sprouts, dude. You're going down. <laughs> Yo, what's up, bro-tatoes? 
Whew. So we're here, we got potatoes, delicious on our plate, and tomatoes, disgusting on our plate. We're gonna spin the wheel to see what body part we have to use to separate these. So spin that wheel. Get spinny. Looks like we're doing elbows. All right, here we go. Who's gonna count us down? I think I will. All right, here we go, dudes. Three, two, one, go! How come my elbows don't work? <laughs> oh. Yeah! No! How are you doing this? Oh, there you go, there you go, there you go. Oh! Ah. Yes! I got four. I got One, three. two, three. Woo! I think I got four. You're eating. You're eating. All right, all right. Uh, what am I eating? Uh, do you know what's also gross? Brussels sprouts. Oh! Take a nice big bite. How was that? All right, should we move on to round Dude, two? That was not chill, bro. All right, dudes, here we go, heading into our next round. Round two, let's spin that wheel again. Woo! I think I got it. Low I can key. do this. All right. I can do this. Here we go, dudes. I can do this. Here we go. Count us down. Three, two, one. I don't want to put a tomato in my mouth. I don't want to lose. Woo! No. Dudes, that was gnarly, bro. Totally awesome, dude. Look, guess what looks like you gotta eat a turnip. This is all you, dude. What even is this? A turnip, bro. They're good oh. for your mind. I, I, thought, I got so smart, dude. Yeah. Ugh. Do I have to eat it? Do what you gotta do, dude. Well, that was something, I'll be honest, it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be to separate those two vegetables with into different bowls, especially when we could only use our elbows. <laughs> no kidding, bro. Who knew tomatoes could be so slippery? It's a good reminder of our story and like our lesson today though. Just like separating the vegetables from each other was challenging. Separating ourselves from the world around us can be super tough. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It would be way easier just to blend into the crowd and do what everyone else is doing. Kind of like it would have been way easier just to use our hands for that challenge. But God, doesn't want us to live like everyone else. He wants us to stand apart and live a way that reflects him. Like Daniel stood apart by choosing to eat vegetables instead of the king's food. Wow. Well, bro, that's all for us today. I'm Broccoli Rob and this is Josh the Squash. <laughs> See you next time, dudes. Bye. Wow, talk about standing out. Daniel and his friends had to live in a new land with new names, new customs, and new beliefs that were all totally different from their own. 
To make things worse, the people in this new land didn't worship or believe in God. So Daniel and his friends were completely alone. It would have been way easier just to go with the flow and do what everyone else was doing in the palace. But Daniel knew that following God meant living for him in every situation, even the hard ones. Eating the king's food would have been dishonoring to God because the food of the king had been sacrificed to false gods and idols before it was being served to eat. Daniel decided not to eat the king's food. Instead, he decided to please God rather than pleasing the king. That decision could have cost him his life, but he risked it because he knew following God was worth it. We'll probably never find ourselves in a situation like Daniel did, but we may find ourselves in other situations that make standing out tough. Situations like facing judgment from classmates or rejection from friends who don't understand. It can feel scary and lonely, but thankfully God promises that we won't be alone. He'll be with us and so will other Christians. That's one reason why going to church is so awesome. Not only do you get to learn more about God, but you can build friendships with others who believe the same things as you and can support you in living them out. If you don't have a church family yet, why not check us out here at Hope City? We have three campuses around Edmonton, and we'd love to do life with you. Let's pray and ask God to help us stand out for Him this week. God, I just thank you for who you are and who you've called us to be. I pray that you would just give us boldness and courage to stand out, to be different than those around us. God, help us to be like Daniel and make decisions in following you instead of following those around us. So we pray this in your name, amen. Well, thanks for hanging out with us today, friends. We love spending time with you and we can't wait to see you back here online or in person at one of our three campuses next week. You can check out hopecity.ca slash kids for information on a campus or program near you. See you then, bye.